Welcome to Glimpses of Science, an audio series in which we present researchers at the IMP Vienna and showcase their work. The IMP, short for Institute of Molecular Pathology, is a vibrant basic research institution at the heart of the Vienna Biocenter. We are passionate about science and dedicated to answering some of the most fundamental questions in molecular biology. Our 200 researchers from 40 countries are driven by curiosity and determined to meet the highest standards. In this episode, we present group leader Clemens Paschke, who joined the IMP in April 2018. Clemens wants to understand how a functional messenger RNA is produced and studies the different stages of its maturation with structural methods. In this audio portrait, Clemens talks about his research and explains the techniques he uses. He also looks back at how he got to be a scientist in the first place and gives advice to aspiring students. I'm fascinated by gene expression and how this works at the mechanistic level in eukaryotic cells. The big question is, how do you go from a DNA-encoded gene to a functional protein? Gene expression occurs in four general stages, the synthesis, processing, export, and translation of mRNA. And during my PhD, I, I worked on understanding how the early stages of mRNA synthesis work. Then afterwards, in my postdoc, I focused on how mRNA is processed. And now in my own group, I want to look in greater detail at how uh, mRNA processing occurs and coordinates with subsequent processes in the cell, um, such as mRNA export. These questions are really important, as every protein coding gene depends on these four stages to produce a functional mRNA. And therefore, understanding how each individual step of this process occurs is important for understanding the overall mechanism. Uh, additionally, defects uh, in these uh, st events um, are linked to a broad range of diseases, uh, including cancer. So when RNA is synthesized by polymerase, it is produced in stretches of coding sequences, which are referred to as exons, and non-coding sequences, referred to as introns. And during gene expression, these introns have to be removed. In our most recent work, uh, which was published this July, we wanted to understand how, the how a machine called a spliceosome is recruited to these non-coding introns to recognize them for subsequent excision. And to do this, we used a method called cryo-electron microscopy, which allows us to determine three-dimensional structures of protein RNA complexes. Um, and from, from this study, uh, we could see for the first time how two subcomplexes of the spliceosome associate um, and recognize these conserved sequences within uh, non-coding introns. The basic principles of, of cryoM are that you take your sample, you vitrify it in a thin layer of ice, uh, which means that your sample is now distributed um, in multiple copies on a single EM grid, or cryo-EM grid in this case, which you can then insert into your cryo-electron microscope image, and then subsequently, um, using computational methods, you can pick out um, the single particles and reconstruct these into a single three-dimensional volume, uh, which you can then interpret for its location of individual atoms. And in this way, from a single sample, um, you can get a single structure. Now, in reality, it often looks uh, more complicated in that um, com complexes that we prepare by biochemical means can be very heterogeneous. They can be heterogeneous because of their compositional uh, variation or alternatively because of the dynamics in the sample, so flexibility of domains relative to other domains, for example. And this is the real power of cryem that using these computational tools, we can really start to tease out um, these compositional as well as um, dynamic um, heterogeneities 
And in the process, uh, we learn a lot about the underlying biology. So, of course, um, my group is not the only group on campus that has become very excited about cryem. Um, there are other labs, um, such as that of David Haselbach and Tim Clausen, Jan Peters, and Tom Malewitz, um, who apply cryem to their own uh, biological questions. And I think in this way, we're very fortunate in that we're building a, a community here um, at the Vienna Biocenter, but also the greater Vienna area. Um, since at IST, there have also now been uh, heavy investments into very modern EM infrastructure. I've always been fascinated, even during my bachelor studies, with uh, understanding how gene expression works at the mechanistic level. And so when I was uh, looking for where to do my PhD, um, I actually found my PhD lab uh, for a very serendipitous way. So I was going through one of the molecular biology textbooks that, that we had in our class, and I, I turned to a page where there was a picture um, of a crystal structure of the yeast uh, RNA polymerase 2 enzyme. And this really caught my attention because I, I'd never seen or appreciated you know, such a large um, structure and what we could learn uh, on its function just by looking at the three-dimensional organization. And so I turned the textbook to the references to find out which lab um, this work came from. And this is how I first came upon uh, Patrick Kramer's lab. And so of course I, I had to go there and, and interview and see that, that um, I enjoyed the atmosphere there, which fortunately I did. And so I ended up joining his lab, uh, first in Munich. And then after two years, um, he moved to the Max Planck in Göttingen, uh, where, also where I spent the rest uh, of my PhD. What I really appreciated in Patrick's lab was the degree of independence that um, his students enjoy there to pursue their own projects. Uh, I think this was really uh, one of the key events that, that um, made me want to stay in science. Because of this autonomy, um, I could really integrate my own ideas into my project. Um, that was just extremely rewarding. And in a way, this kind of independence is also what I sought in my postdoc mentor uh, when I was looking for, for where to do that. Um, now, on a personal level, this was what I was looking for was this the same autonomy to pursue my research. But from a biological point of view, um, I became really fascinated with what happens to the nascent RNA after the polymerase enzyme has produced it. And so this is where I became interested into splicing. And Kyoshi Nagai's lab at the LMB um, focuses on understanding the structural basis of how splicing works. And so this is how I came to join his group. Um, what I kind of realized at the end of my postdoc was that, you know, as, as I think probably most people experience it, there's always more to do than you can do with your own two hands. And so because I, I was so fascinated by um, RNA processing and then now what happens downstream, uh, I wanted to become an independent group leader. And this is where the IMP first came onto uh, my radar and uh, in the end also uh, joined to start my own group. What attracted me to, to the IMP um, and the generally the Vienna Biocenter was the general scientific excellence, uh, which operates here, I think, at an extremely high level. Um, to me, what also impressed me a lot was the great diversity of research questions that people here address not only from the point of the questions, but also uh, from the point of the methods. Um, so it's been really fun for me to learn through the Monday seminars where students of the different groups present their, their work, uh, what kind of uh, different methods we have available, starting from zebrafish um, to organoids, um, gene expression analysis to structural studies. We really have everything on offer here. Um, I think maybe on a personal note, uh, on one of my first visits, I think what impressed me most about the IMP was actually the faculty and the extreme enthusiasm with which they conveyed their work. Uh, and this to me was really infectious and, and got me hooked, I think, on the IMP. Um, I think 
what we benefit from as, as a new lab um, is also the potential of collaborations on campus. And so, for example, the Zuber Lab um, has been extremely helpful in getting us started with um, CRISPR-Cas9 genome engineering uh, to, produ to produce um, cell lines that uh, are useful for our work. And finally, I think what is also very important here is the great support we have from the core facilities. Uh, so for our work, particularly the protein production facility is very relevant, um, the molecular biology services, as well as the EM facility. Uh, and for example, the EM facility recently acquired a new uh, Glacius microscope, which will allow us to do very high throughput uh, screening um, of our um, new uh, complexes that we produce. Speaking from my own experience, I've always looked at two things when deciding where to pursue my science. On the one hand, I've looked at the biology and the biological question that's being answered. And on the second hand, uh, at the lab, where I would pursue that question. And for me, the science always comes first. Uh, so I've always gone by which questions uh, excite me, which questions am I passionate about, and this then helped me narrow down the, the, the labs that, that I would be interested in. And then the second uh, factor is the lab. And this can be described in general terms, so what is the scientific infrastructure available, but I mean it more in terms of lab philosophies. And what I've really enjoyed in the labs that I've been previously um, was really the great um, intellectual freedom um, that, that the students enjoyed and also the great trust that came from the group leaders um, into the work that we were doing. Uh, and this is really something uh, that I would also like to implement in my own lab uh, in the future.